Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Loyo's seventh educational webinar. I'm so delighted to see all of you here. And, you know, I'd, as usual, I'd love to thank all of you for constant support and interest in our events because you help us, you know, make our events more interesting, invite more people, discuss more topics. And I think it's really important nowadays, you know, to, to be able to share information and to make sure that we create some useful educational content. And uh, today we're actually going to talk about tips, tools, and learning resources to write better legal content. And in this webinar, we will learn what it takes to craft different format of legal content. And, you know, that puts you and your business above the competition. So very, very interesting topic today. And uh, I know that, you know, the fact that you're here with us today watching this webinar means that you're actually interested in making your business, legal business successful, law firm successful, and, you know, promote yourself a, a, as a legal professional out there. So, uh, you know, while we're waiting for the rest of the audience to join our stream, for those of you who have joined us already, could you please share which platform you think is the most effective for creating and promoting legal content. I know that a bunch of professionals use LinkedIn, a personal blog, corporate website, maybe even TikTok. I, I've seen a bunch of very, very fun and at the same time, very informative TikToks out there. So, uh, you know, don't be shy. Send us your comments in a, a live chat on the right side of the screen. And, you know, we'd love to get to know you a little bit better and uh, learn about uh, you know, platforms or channels that you're using currently. And we're going to wait for 30 seconds or a minute or so. Um, let's see. So if you have any any interesting information to share, let's see. Alex says, hi, I use LinkedIn trying to write some cases for practice. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Alex. Um, let's see. Can we see a comment from someone else? That would be really interesting for us to, to know you better. Mary, LinkedIn, professional websites and Facebook are interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay, anyone else would like to share with us before we start? Okay, while um, you are writing your comments, uh, you know, I would love to tell a couple of words about our product Loyo. Loyo is a contract review software that was, you know, created to help law firms save time and money, you know, and streamline the contract review process. So if your law firm is looking for a way to speed up contract review and boost overall efficiency, drop us a line and we will be happy to show you around the product and address your questions in, in a quick 15 minutes call. Uh, and me or one, one of our team members will be happy to, you know, to talk to you, walk you through our product and, you know, try to solve some of the pain points that you might be experiencing. Um, okay, let's see. We actually have got a few more comments that I want to go over. Some folks post funny videos on TikTok. Yeah, that's right. Instagram mainly. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. And I guess now it's time to introduce our wonderful speaker, Sarah Wies. She's former in-house counsel and founder of Law But How. Uh, after seven years of working as in-house counsel and having a strong interest in legal design and content creation, Sarah has launched Law But How, a company that helps legal teams and legal service providers create innovative and user-friendly legal materials to serve their customers. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much, Elena. Hi, everyone. I'm very excited to be uh, around you today. Well, great to have you here. I'm sure today is going to be very interesting for, for our audience. You know, we're going to go over some of some of the really interesting questions. And as far as I know, if I'm not mistaken, yesterday was your birthday. Is that correct, Sarah? Yes, it was. <laughs> well, on, on behalf of Lawyer's team, we would love to, to wish you a happy birthday and, you know, wish you a lot of uh, professional inspiration because I'm sure you inspire your, uh, you know, audience every day with, with some useful information. So, you know, happy birthday from us. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, I've turned 30 
already. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's nothing, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> nah, yeah. Well, uh, let's see. So before we, you know, dive into our questions, I would love to outline today's uh, the structure of today's event. Uh, first of all, we're going to go over the questions that we have initially announced on, on our platform. And then a second part of the event is going to be dedicated to Q&A um, session from the audience. So for those of you who are watching us right now, please make sure to send us your questions in live chat. And we will try to answer, you know, if, if not all of them, but at least most of them <laughs> during today's event. And, uh, you know, the winner of the best question today will actually get a present from us, which is $100 Amazon gift card and one year subscription with Loyo. And the cool part about this is that Sara will get a chance to choose the winner. <laughs> so, Sara, get ready. <laughs> We're putting a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, I guess we are ready to start with our questions. Uh, and I guess I would love to start with with a general question: What is legal content, and you know what role um, it has in putting your business above the competition? So, and it, and it is a great one, I guess, to 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 start with. And, and obviously, in the audience, we've already seen that people are leveraging social media um, uh, to, to to create content. But um, social media, at the end of the day, is uh, I mean, it, it is a channel. It is a channel. It is a vehicle for legal information. But if we go back to the basics, um, legal content is very much information uh, that goes in the medium. Um, and I think in terms of legal content, I would probably classify them into two categories. Number one would be um, the technical legal information. So let's say uh, a lawyer in intellectual property producing uh, content around trademarks. So that would be one uh, uh, way to, to, to create content. Um, and the other way is much more, um, I guess, any pieces of information that may be relevant for the legal profession in general. So, uh, so, so that would be kind of like a high level uh, overview of what legal content is about. Thank you, Sarah. And, you know, could you kind of clarify who is the main audience for this legal content and what does it expect from, the, I mean, what does this audience expect from this legal content? Uh, so I guess I'm going to answer with a very, like, um, uh, lawyer uh, answer. It depends. Um, there's no one audience, right? So if you look at the legal contents, we go back to the basics. We've got two types. Then you've got the mediums, right? So anything that you put out there, whether it's a podcast, whether it's an infographic on social media, whether it's a book, um, whether it's a webinar, you know, like you and I talking today, this webinar will be obviously posted uh, on, 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 on social media later on. So all of those things do participate um, uh, to, you know, creating content that would be visible for your intended audience. And when I say intended audience, is obviously that um, the audience that I have, which is mainly, um, which mainly consists of legal professionals, so people in the legal industry, and uh, taking back the example of the IP lawyer uh, who is serving companies, we won't have the same audience, right? So, um, so your legal content very much has to to be tailored and 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 be relevant and variable to whoever you are targeting: entrepreneurs, legal professionals. Um, business people uh, or people from a certain industry, etc. So there's no one audience really, but it very much depends. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you, thank you. And uh, you know, nowadays, I guess it's it's very common and and well known that you know creating a strong personal brand can actually help to boost your career and you know professional development. So how do you think how do you use legal content to to build your brand on social media and how it can actually help you in your professional life? So I guess what's interesting um, um, in my story is that historically when I started to put myself out there on social media, it was very much to um, help out legal professionals, especially junior uh, legal professionals uh, getting into the legal market. Those, and, and mainly, obviously, French legal professionals, because I'm a French lawyer who then went to the UK. So that was really where I, I, I started. And then when I saw, obviously, you know, the, 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 the network I've been building and the visibility I've been build, building, and the fact that I've kind of established myself as the go-to person for international career advice for lawyers, I was kind of like, I mean, there is something there, right? So yes, I can help out junior lawyers, but I 
there's so much more I can do, right? And another thing that I obviously was, um, that I was really frustrated with uh, as a legal professional is obviously, you know, the, the, the stigma around the legal industry, you know, the fact that the legal industry or legal professionals could be portrayed in a certain way as not being accessible and, and not necessarily meet their end users where they are and not having empathy and all of that. And so I started to create content in different in different ways later to kind of showcase my creativity yes i'm an in-house lawyer i'm a legal professional but hey you know i can transform legal information and make an infographic out of it so that's kind of how i've been um developing um visibility on uh, on social media so it started with, with a frustration i then wanted to obviously um you know add value to the legal industry and also inspire legal professionals with you know, um, legal design and, and, and visual legal information. Uh, and then I got onto TikTok. Obviously, Jennifer was was talking about TikTok um, uh, earlier. And and I I was um, initially just trying out, you know, the TikTok as a as a social media. And I've managed to kind of, you know, do a lot of TikTok about the in-house legal profession and, and how you know frustrated we can be with salespeople. And all of those things really have contributed. Uh, to grow my visibility on social media and um, a couple of years down the line i kind of realized that actually first of all i'm really passionate about making legal information better and creating engaging content so that's number one and that's where low but how uh, um, that's how low but how came about um so impacting the industry in a creative manner uh, through information uh, content and design and the other thing is working in legal tech as well. So um, my uh, I've just left the in-house profession uh, to work in the legal tech space, uh, uh, in the in more particularly contract life cycle management. And this um, employment opportunity has come up thanks to my content on social media because my hiring manager was following me uh, on social media, and he reached out and he kind of you know felt that. Yeah, I could be a great fit for his team and and you know help develop the visibility of the product, et cetera, et cetera. So, so it kind of goes to show that you know you can build a business, you can grow your uh, by growing your visibility, you can develop your career as a legal professional by putting valuable content, and um, it you don't necessarily know what to expect, um, but that's obviously my personal story is an example of that. Wow, that's that's quite an adventure, I would say. <laughs> um, well, maybe you could also suggest the ultimate legal content stack uh, any legal service provider or legal team should have, you know, just the basics that you should start with, perhaps. So I think, obviously, I guess it will vary if you are obviously a legal professional creating content, um, um, you know, to, to, to grow your, your, your personal brand or if you are a legal service provider. Um, and, and, and it depends on the time you have, the resources really you have to, you know, get out there and create content. What I would say is obviously, you know, um, you, the, the wider you can go, the better. If you are able, uh, I can see Jennifer on the comment who talks about video content, um, there's much more engagement. And, and, and that is true, right? Especially short videos in the lack of um, TikTok. So, if you can focus on, if you can diversify, that's great because some people are more into podcasts, some people uh, are more into videos. So for podcasts, you can use Anchor, for example. Um, some people are more into video content, in which case TikTok videos or, uh, or Reels on Instagram could be a great um, way to, to, to create video content. Some people are more into visuals or infographics. So you know, talking product here, Canva is a great uh, product to use to, to design infographics or even visual content. Um, whether, you know, you you more, you know, focused on maybe creating an ebook. So it very much depends on, you know, what type of content you want to create on what medium. And that will drive obviously the tools that you will be using. Uh, the wider you can go, the better. But if you lack resources, you might want to focus on one or two mediums so for me it's infographics it's visual and TikTok, for example as opposed to you know try to be everywhere but you know not necessarily having a quality a quality content so it's very much an arbitrage uh, depending on uh, you know your resources and the medium that you prefer as well 
Yeah, makes sense. Uh, well, thank you, Sarah. And I guess the next question I have is about, you know, how legal content can actually be a key factor in clients' decision. So how do you craft legal content that makes clients go back and back, go back again and again? And what channels should you focus on for, to, you know, to attract those clients to, to make sure they trust you more perhaps, you know, because when they see you as a, as a real person, who can be fun, who can provide useful content, they, they're just more uh, eager to trust you and to build this kind of personal relationship with you because they feel like they know you already. So maybe you could share some thoughts on this as well. Yeah, and, and, and I think it will work well with Mike, um, with Mike's question about you know, best practices um, for legal content. I think the short answer is value. If you want your clients or uh, your audience to grow, your clients to come back, you have to provide value. Nobody's going to waste their time um, uh, consuming content that isn't relevant for them, or that isn't interesting, or that, or that you know, that doesn't, or content that don't really solve a problem. So the, the key, really, the key answer is value. Your content has to be valuable, and of course, you know, it has to, it has to be easy to digest. It has to be, you know, like straight to the point, practical. Um, but, you know, overall, they all participate to a value. You have to provide valuable, meaningful content that solves a problem, provides solution, uh, educate, entertain. So whatever, you know, the, your top goal is, the, you always have to ask yourself, is my content valuable to the audience I'm targeting? Right. Um, and then they can be valuable through different ways. Entertainment, again, awareness, education. So you can have different goals but it has to um, uh, it has to be valuable, um, and then obviously you know you can uh, you can diversify uh, you can diversify your content. I think the more you create and the more you will figure out what really is valuable versus things that don't necessarily work out. So you know practice makes perfect. Um, but yeah, if you want to grow visibility, if you want to build a personal brand, whatever your end objective is, you have to provide value, and that's through meaningful content. Yeah, absolutely. I guess that kind of relates to my next question about quality versus quantity. And I yeah. guess, you know, how to keep that balance and, you know, what are the main principles of consistency creating legal content that works? So um, it, it is a great one. And again, you know, if you the wider you can go, the better, but only to the extent you do it right. <laughs> You can create great ebooks and webinars and, pod and and a great podcast and a YouTube channel and infographics. If you can create all of those things in a way that is, you know, obviously valuable, then great, go for it. Uh, otherwise, you might want to be a bit more focused and maybe choose, you know, one or two medium to start with. Something else I would say, and it goes back to uh, obviously Mike's point in terms of, you know, the, the checklist. So something I always tell to people is, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can be really smart with your content um, strategy when you repurpose the content. And I'm going to give you an example. Obviously, Elena, you and I are talking today. We have a webinar. So this webinar is going to go on YouTube, right, for example. So that's one piece of content. But then out of obviously our conversation, you can, you know, transform the conversation into a text and that will give you like an interview, like an article. So that's the second piece of content. Uh, you can create, um, you, you can create a visual summarizing the key takeaway of our uh, conversations, right? So that would be like more uh, a carousel that would go on social media. That's the third piece of content. Um, you can create short videos so you can extract, you know, the, the key moments of the webinar, um, into like one, two minutes maximum videos. That's a full, that, that's your fourth piece of content right there out of your master content. So that's always what I say to people, you know, don't reinvent the wheel, make sure that your content is valuable, have focus, you know, if you can't be everywhere at the same time, but equally, if you have a, uh, like your masterpiece of content, like a webinar that you've recorded, how can you repurpose the big, the masterpiece into like much more sizable pieces of content that will ultimately grow your visibility. Well, you've literally just des described everything that we do. <laughs> so I guess we're on the right track. <laughs> no, no, you definitely are. <laughs> uh, well, I guess my next question is kind of related, but what do you think makes a well-crafted piece of legal content? 
are there is there any key to success or specific elements that you've got to have so again that will depend on whether you are a legal professional growing your personal brand or if you are an organization because if you are an organization it's quite impersonal right um even though you want to i guess give a feel for your brand and and it, it remains like a, an organization, right? So I think for an organization, a, a well-crafted piece of content has to be, you know, informative, educational, add value uh, to, to, to to your audience. And obviously you want to establish your, um, your positioning as well in your field. So taking lawyer as an example, um, anything that you can create in relation to Word documents, to formatting, you know, tips to format your documents well, will benefit loyal as a legal service provider in this particular field if you are a legal professional obviously um the a, a well-crafted piece of content is authentic personable i think it's important for people to feel your personality so that's why my i try to make my content engaging and and um because that, that's really who i am i'm a people person right so and i really want my content through my TikTok or my visuals to be funny and engaging and because that's really an, an element of my, of my personality as well. So, you know, personable, uh, authentic, practical, you know, don't get lost in the fluff and things that don't add direct value to your audience. So really think twice before, you know, posting something. Is it really relevant? Is it straight to the point? Is it understandable? Um, and does it add value? ultimately you know uh, what is the takeaway for your audience um i would also say short uh the reason why i say short is because we live in a short in an era of short attention span as well um and the more you can convey information in a short way and the better your content is going to be because people you know scroll their feed obviously you, you know if you're on social media you will see that you know we, we keep on scrolling 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 we don't spend more than five seconds on 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 the piece of content really i mean unless we are reading an article but even then we will you know skim through the document right so anything that you can do to make your content easy to consume uh ideally visual uh obviously uh would uh, go a long way i, I would say yeah, makes sense. Thank you, sir. And uh, we have already briefly discussed that, uh, you know, the target audience of legal content can be an actual client. And I guess the goal of legal pros is to make sure that, um, you know, this content is useful and convenient for, for, for the end user, right? For the client. So what should you do to make sure that your content is user friendly? friendly? So user friendly content is obviously, you know, content that is um again you know easy to consume actually solves a problem uh or you know inspire so it achieves the end goal so you can educate entertain um solve a problem that's really the three the, the key things that you can do with uh with content or and inspire as well so you know it has to achieve whatever the objective is you know entertaining educating inspiring um um, solving a problem um, so it has to achieve the purpose it has to be practical again remove anything that is not necessary and it has to be easy to consume so that's where I really I'm, I'm a fan of visual for that particular purpose a visual is much more easy to consume than a long-winded article for example so if you can design an infographic if you, whatever you can create to send to basically pass on your message in a way that is very short and easy will be um, obviously not only of value in terms of the of the actual content, but also in terms of the medium. Yeah, well, do you think it's also um, necessary to avoid legalese uh, in your content? <laughs> Make sure that, that you do not use any complex legal terms when you are creating content for, for the client? So, and again, a very lawyer, lawyer type of answer, it depends. So um, if the more simple you can be with, with the way you convey the information, the better. But with that being said, if, you know, um, if we take, a, you know, a law firm uh, who serve legal teams and they are targeting, obviously, you know, general counsel, like in-house lawyers, 
Um, and, you know, they, they are writing an article about, you know, privacy and the recent updates. They will go technical. They won't necessarily go legalese as such, but they will, they, they will go technical. So, um, so the use of legalese or the use of technical jargon may be okay if your audience is a seasoned audience. So again, it always goes back to the end user. But with that being said, obviously, if you can find an easier way of conveying the same information, then do it. Because obviously, even the general counsel, you know, will, it is likely to consume your content outside of office hours and they might not want to look at another legalese again. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but it doesn't mean that you can't use legalese. It, it, it very much depends on who the audience is. Got it. Thank you. Um, maybe you could also share um, uh, from your experience uh, some information about tools that you could use to simplify and optimize the creation of legal content. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so for so for podcasts, I mean, I mean, I'm not a podcaster, but um, so for podcasts, you would have Encore. Encore is a very easy to use product when it comes to podcast recording and editing and posting. And you can post through Encore on 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 various platforms, including uh, Spotify, um, and and obviously uh, uh, Apple as well, uh, iTunes. Um, Another one that you have, uh, so obviously design-wise, Canva. So Canva, uh, that's usually the, the stack I'm using. So Canva, uh, uh, PowerPoint, and flat, flat icon. So flat icon allows you to have uh, icons, so you can basically drop and drag and drop icons onto your PowerPoint presentation, uh, as opposed to just rely on you know whatever images are available in PowerPoint. You can use third-party software like like flat icon. To, um, to 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 um, help uh, with your uh, uh, with your design, um, so these would be the key tools that I'm using. Um, I'm trying to think on top of my head if there's something else. Oh, um, to schedule as well. So you would have buffer. Uh, so if you want to schedule your posts, so let's say that you know you want to batch content and 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 schedule uh, all of your posts during the week. You know, so there's something you you might want to post today, something else that you want to you might want to post on your social media in a week time. So you can use a, a scheduler as well. So a uh, software like Buffer would be perfect for that. Thank you for sharing, Sarah. I hope all of you out there took a note and wrote down the list <laughs> to start with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Um, and, uh, you know, nowadays there is so much content being created every day and I, it's really difficult to stand out and, you know, to make sure that people see your content. So. Let's talk about promotion, content promotion. Mm -hmm. um, how should you promote your legal content? So, you know, going back to who the audience is, obviously, um, you know, social media. I mean, to me, I mean, that's free. And you can reach, you know, tens of thousands of, of views in a very short amount of time and nothing else on the market can allow you to do that. So promotion of social, of, of legal content to me has to go through social media. You can decide whatever social media works better for you, depending again on your audience. So if it's more like a seasoned audience, maybe LinkedIn might be a better medium. Uh, if, if you're more in the B2C context and Facebook and Instagram might be better social media to, to focus on. Uh, I'm, I'm personally using TikTok and, and LinkedIn and, and Instagram, and that's more than enough <laughs> uh, for me at the moment. Um, but then obviously, you know, if you have a website, then you will want your website to be easily searchable and therefore you would have also written content on your website as well if you have a blog section or, um, or what have you. But I don't have a website personally and, and, and I've seen the benefit of social media. So if I had to choose, that would be, uh, for content promotion, that would be social media, 100%. Thank you, Sarah. And I guess uh, my last question before we move to our Q&A session is about learning resources. Maybe you can suggest specific books, podcasts, anything that can help our audience to create better content. Yeah, so th the one who really got me into creating content, I mean, I did it without realizing that it was content, um, but the one who really helped me framing, you know, the benefits of content creation in the legal industry was Gary Vee. Uh, so G Gary Vaynerchuk, so he's, uh, he's an entrepreneur and, and he's a founder of a digital marketing um, um, company and he's got obviously he's all over the place in social media and he talks about content all day long. That's really what he talks about. Um, so if you follow him on, on, on his social media, LinkedIn, uh, he's everywhere. 
<laughs> LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube. He's all over the place because he, he believes in the power of content. He knows business. how to create content and how to promote it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's really what he does. And he's really the one who inspired me. And uh, his book as well. Uh, um, so he's got two on, on specifically on content, which is Crush It. Um, I think it was released back in 2008. Uh, but, and he's got Crushing It as well. And the Crushing It version talks about social media. So in 2008, he was really ahead of the game already because social media wasn't a thing back in 2008, uh, or not as much as it is now. And, but Crushing It gives a concrete example of how people have managed to succeed uh, uh, through content creation and, and where they are, they are at now. So Gary, Gary V, his books, his resources on social media, that would be the, the, the go-to places. Well, thank you, Sarah. I guess it's time to move to our Q&A session. I know we've got quite a few questions uh, in live chat. Now we're going to show them on the screen. Uh, question from Mike, can you share the best practice of legal content? What is the typical mistakes? Do you have a checklist which help me to write better? I think you've briefly covered this, but maybe you could elaborate a little bit and give more yeah. details. No, absolutely. So, um, so Mike, thank you for the question. Best practices um, in terms of, of legal content, again, you know, does it, um, I mean, who are you talking to? Always ask yourself, if I was to give you a checklist, who are you talking to, right? Uh, so who is your audience and what are they interested in? What are their pain points? Or what are the things that you feel you could add value? Um, uh, to them, so that so you really have to, I guess, think about you know the audience and the objective, right? And then, and then obviously, you know the 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 how will you be doing that? You know, will you be um, you know uh, addressing their you know their needs or their pain points, or you know through entertainment, through education, so you know how to type of post. Um, Will you be more focused on you know like inspiring them to do things in a different way and be able to influence? Um, so, you know, so try to ask yourself, you know, what are the, the objectives behind, you know, the piece of content that you will be drafting. And then I guess that will drive the medium, right? So, um, if, if you really want to, if it's a really like complicated, um, you know, point that you want to address, then you might want to start with an article and then do the repurposing strategy that I've talked about, um, and, you know, and try to extract whatever is, is relevant. Um, so, so that would be really, you know, um, the way I would do it. Um, and then obviously, you know, what is the medium that you're the most comfortable with? Again, you might be more comfortable in a podcast, uh, or on a YouTube channel, you know, in a, in a video form, or you might be, you know, more comfortable with TikTok videos. So try to identify the medium as well uh, to, uh, as vehicles for, for your content. And I guess in terms of typical mistakes, um, something, especially in the legal community, that comes up very often is, you know, the fear of missing out, <laughs> the fear of not being accurate enough or no, not being specific enough and, you know, missing the point. I think we have that a lot with lawyers. Um, so, for example, you know, if you put together an infographic, so you want to design a visual, but you put too much text in there and too much information, it's no longer an infographic. It's an article on a picture, right? So, so you, you you really have to be mindful of the fact that every each and every medium serves a different purpose, and you really have to kind of you know think about you know what are the things that might go into an infographic that wouldn't go in an article and vice versa. Okay, so that's that's very typical for lawyers to be very detailed orientated and not necessarily think about the fact that if it depending on the medium you have to adjust the way you convey the information. Thank you, Sarah. Let's see our next question. Next question is from Alex. What successful types of content you've created on your job for legal tech company? So I've just started, uh, Alex. So I haven't had the chance yet to, um, uh, to, 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 to create anything uh, for them, but I definitely have ideas. So obviously in the CLM space and legal tech in general, something I would tell you is that obviously when you're selling a legal tech product to lawyers, I mean, you know, there is, a, there is a risk aversion. You know, lawyers aren't necessarily the early adopters when it comes to doing things differently or especially the, with the use of new technology, et cetera. So it takes a lot of education to get them to a point where, you know, they will really want to embrace legal tech. So um, if you are running a legal tech company, 
something I would say is obviously if you are selling selling to lawyers, you I think educational content would be the way. So in the contract life cycle management space, educating your audience about the various types of CLMs that are out there could be a great piece of content, right? So are they, you know, there are CLMs more focused, I guess, on the automation of contracts. Some of them are more focused on, you know, managing the life cycle, past the execution, et cetera. So educating your audience could be a great piece of content because not only you raise awareness about your brand, but you're also adding value uh, for an audience that is, you know, naturally risk averse. Um, so yeah, so that would be my two cents on this. Thank you, Sarah. And let's see our next question. How to balance, pers balance personal brand and perception of the employer or an employee putting the spotlight on him or her? An employer may feel the employee isn't loyal or is seeking employment opportunities. That's an interesting question. Yeah, it's a very good one. Um, it's and, and it is a topic that comes very often. Um, and I mean, obviously, you know, whatever you post on, on, on social media, you have to make sure that you comply with, you know, the, your, your, your employer's um, uh, policies in terms of the use of social media, et cetera. But equally, I think we live in an era where, um, you know, it, I mean, being out there, you know, is becoming the norm. The legal industry is probably, again, you know, behind compared to other industries, but I mean, if you look at, you know, even like successful CEOs or, you know, the Elon Musk and the, the Richard Branson of, of, of this world, I mean, they are as famous, if, if not more famous than the, the, the company that they are actually running um, because people do business with people. And I think employers, in my view, should really embrace um, the fact that actually they can, their employees can be their great advocates. They might not talk about their employers, they might just create content about, you know, a passion that they have, but ultimately, you know, it puts the spotlight on, on, on them indirectly because people will want to know, you know, yeah, where do they work and what, what's their, you know, what's their job title and, 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 and all of those things. So, yes, you have to obviously comply with the policies, etc. but equally, I think if you're really into finding, building a personal brand and you're facing some perhaps not justifiable rejections or or fears. I mean, how, having a discussion can be, can really solve problems and you can agree, you know, to review the content with them first, et cetera. I mean, there could be ways to tackle the issue, but at the same time, I mean, if this is not a possibility, then perhaps the, you know, I would question whether the, the, the you know, the organization is right for you. Um, and if, you know, if they can't be supportive of your professional development, because that's what personal branding is about. It's about uh, developing yourself uh, uh, as a professional. So, yeah, I mean, you know, if it doesn't work out, then I guess you can go elsewhere as well. Uh, good. Let's see our next question. So how do you suggest a lawyer protects themselves to ensure content is not used as legal advice by, con by consumers? So, I mean, what I've seen, um, I mean, I, I don't, I don't necessarily create uh, content that is, uh, that could be perceived as legal advice, but I think what I've seen other content creators doing is very much putting a disclaimer. Um, I mean, to be honest, I, I mean, I would really argue and, and, and again, we will probably get into a legal argument there, but I mean, you know, putting an infographic on, on copyrights and getting somebody actually, you know, arguing that, you know, this was intended to them as a, as a piece of legal advice. I mean, to me, that there's a great gap between, you know, legal information, which is really what legal content is about, and actual legal advice that has to be tailored, you know, to, to a particular client, et cetera. So again, you know, I would say on the balance, balance of risk, it's probably, um, it's probably a fairly you know, limited, risk uh but again obviously i haven't really faced this uh, this scenario before but if that can make you more comfortable then i guess you could add a disclaimer you know uh, at the bottom of the page if you're creating an infographic or on your social media channels etc our in-house consoles always put a disclaimer even when they send me an email they just just in case <laughs> just to clear. so that's i guess i guess that's a very common uh, legal practice so yeah i guess that yeah. Just a, yeah this is a concern definitely <laughs> uh okay let's see our next question uh what is the key way of 
getting re real feedback that would shape your approach and strategy going forward. For example, likes and views, direct messages and comments. Um, I think if you if you really, really want to get uh, actual feedback from from your from your audience, I would probably go for like more engaging uh, mechanisms such as polls, uh, you know, or even like forms, you know, uh, asking for people feedback. Um, I think obviously likes, um, likes and views. I mean, I guess you would see a trend if you, and that, and that's why consistency is key. If you put one piece of content, there is no way of knowing whether the, the piece of content was engaging enough for your audience, right? You have to create content consistently on your key areas of influence and you will see a trend. You will see what works and what doesn't. You will see the content that people engage the most with and, 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 um, uh, you know, and, and the content that is probably less relevant as well. So I think, you know, you have to start doing and doing it at scale and on a, uh, on a consistent basis. Um, if you want something more tailored, you could use polls or you could use, you know, like forms and ask people to, you know, um, complete a form, you know, and, and, and asking for their feedback on things. So you could do that as well if you want something really specific. But I think I would probably go for, you know, action, iteration, creation, and then yes, of course, you know, comments and, and DMs might be another way to to get to get feedback as well. Makes sense. Thank you, Sarah. Well, unfortunately, I think this was our last question for today. I know we have many more, but unfortunately, we don't have time. Maybe we'll try to answer those questions later after you know today's stream in, in a post or maybe in the comments to this video. Uh, but for now, we actually have to choose the winner. For... Oh my goodness. <laughs> Do we need to see the questions that we've covered? Uh, let's see if we can put them on screen. Uh, the first one yes. was from Mike about check. Yeah, all the good questions, to be honest. Um, and and it's a shame that obviously. Um, it's a shame that we don't have enough time. Um, I know. Um, <sighs> I would probably, I would probably go for um, for the one about uh, um, you know personal brand uh, and uh, yeah, this one and and yeah and perception uh, of the employer because it's one of those things that people are really worried about, but it, but they're not necessarily you know they that they don't necessarily dare asking the question. Uh, and I love responding to it as well in, you know, in a quite transparent manner. So I would go for this one. Well, congratulations to the person who sent us this question. Uh, make sure to send us a quick note to support at lawyer.com so that we could actually get back to you with instructions on how you can get your present. Congratulations. Congratulations. And uh, for those of you who kept sending us questions, thank you so much for being active. It means a lot to us, uh, you know, that you are actually interested in this topic, that you want to learn more about this topic. So. As I said, we will make sure to answer those questions later in, in our comments. So don't get discouraged by the fact that we didn't answer them. And I, I wish and Sarah wishes we, we had more time to, to cover those questions today. Uh, so, uh, you know, we will tomorrow we will make sure to send the recording of this video um, to, to your emails. So watch out for, for, an, for an email from us. And, uh, you know, also I would love to invite you, all of you to Lawyers Legal Productivity Club on LinkedIn, because this is a great place for legal professionals who want to be more productive and effective in their pro professional and personal life. And there we will actually discuss everything related to task optimization, professional productivity, effectiveness, work-life balance uh, in legal area. So there will be a bunch of interesting and uh, valuable content there. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Now we know that this is a key to success. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thank you well, so much. Um, thank you, Sarah. It was a pleasure to have you here with us today. Uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, our audience has learned, learned a lot today. And, you know, uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch with you. Hopefully we'll be able to do this again sometimes. And uh, I'm sure, you know, we'll be able to, we'll get a chance to collaborate in some form in the future. Definitely. Uh, and before we, you know, we end today's um, 
event, I would love to encourage our audience to join our next event, which is going to take place on October 21st. And we'll have the honor to chat with Eda Rosa and Holy Sheriff about tips and insights for being a successful paralegal. So join us uh, during our next events. And once again, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sarah. This was amazing. And yeah, have a great evening, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great evening.